than if my people who are called by my name, sons and daughters, and you humble yourself, and you pray and you seek my face, and you turn from your busyness ways, you turn from your busyness worldly ways, it's not wicked, but it's just so busy and it's not of me. But if you just turn from your busyness, I will hear from within you. I will hear from within you. It says from heaven. I will hear from within you and I will forgive your sins and I will restore. 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 Amen. Amen. It's amazing to me, Leah, how how much you want to preach my sermon this morning. God's in sync with us. Amen. Hallelujah. God's in sync. God is good. God is good. God is good. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. King of kings, mighty God of Israel. Mm, sons and daughters, hear the word of God this morning and be encouraged. Mm. All of you who believe, learn today, get something today that perhaps you have just let go by. Mm. Porasatoki. I bet you never guess what my, the heading on my sermon is this morning. God's presence. God's presence. <clears throat> you know, I've been thinking, and it's been for years, I've been thinking. And it still works. <laughs> but you're supposed to go, well, what are you thinking about? But I have been thinking for years about the, all of the powerful people in our time, in the early 20s and through time. It's Amy Simple McPherson and John Lake. You know, some powerful people who have had powerful ministries. And my thinking goes along the lines as, so where is that today? You know, and there's powerful ministries taking place like Toronto or Smithen or Brownsville or there's so many things that happens periodically in spots for a period of time. Amen. Where are they today? You know, we are those who carry the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> seemed like there was, they were so far and few between. And I often question that. I often question that. Hallelujah. Mm. Praise the mighty King of God. Praise the mighty King of Israel. Praise Jesus. We praise you, Holy Spirit. Come and teach us. Come and teach us. I don't want to be a great, big, powerful evangelist. But I want to be in people's lives and see them change and become stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. And I hope this message today, this morning, brings reality to you and makes you stronger. Makes you stronger. I know uh, the last time you heard from me... I ministered along the lines, are you here because you want to or are you here because you have to? And I've asked Brienne to make a, a copy of that sermon for you on CD as our guest. I want you to have that so you can understand more about what I'm sharing today. 
Are we in praise and worship because we want to or because we have to? Are we in prayer because things are so tore up in our lives that now we have to? Or do we pray constantly because we want to? So today's uh, lesson will go along the lines of God's presence. Reading, reading scripture, I'm uh, convinced that the Father God wants us to truly experience, to truly know his presence on a regular, a daily basis. We need to reshape the conversation regarding what it means to experience or to know God's presence. And you don't hear it too often from me that we need to do this or we need to do that. Because then all of a sudden you're under reprimand. So please don't take it that way. But there's things we, we really truly need to do to understand our God. Okay, and, and we need to do that because we want to. And I, I even thought, man, I've already milked that cow, haven't I? <laughs> but when you own a cow, you can't just milk it once. <laughs> Amen. You're going to hear a lot about that. Amen. <laughs> but we need to reshape the conversation regarding what it means to experience the presence of God. Mm. So with that in mind, here's some simple, ordinary, profound ways that we can enjoy the presence of God every day. Simple, simple thinking, simple teaching here. But we, we just need to let it soak in. Let it soak in. And if you let this soak in today, you won't leave here the same as you come in. Amen? Amen. So just know this. <clears throat> we are always in the presence of God. We are always in the presence of God. It's obvious. God is omnipresent. We are always in his presence. If I could teach omnipresence from what I'm thinking, it, it just stirs up a teaching in me. It just, it's just so deep and it's so vast, this omnipresence. And I've shared with you that you can go into the presence of God at any time. And billions of people could be there in the presence of God, yet it's you and him. Now that's omnipresence. That's powerful, Amen. Amen. We are always in his presence. Thanks for just a moment. Every second, every day, we are truly in his presence. We are truly in the presence of God. He is truly in our presence all the time, every second. That's a good word. Amen. Amen. We don't need to do anything. We don't need to say anything. We don't need to go anywhere special. No need to do anything. Just know. Just know that you and Father are one-on-one, -on -one, face to face, all the time, second by second. Whew. One mind. Believing and knowing that we are in Christ, this goes even deeper. We are not just in the presence of God in the same way that the rest of creation is. Rather, the presence of God has made his home in us. Holy Spirit has taken up residence in us. When God spoke into the universe and created the earth. The spirit moved. That power is in us. All the time, second for second. We are truly, truly 
temples of the living God. I see nothing in scripture that says where God is, the Holy Spirit somewhere else and Jesus is somewhere else. Where one is, they all are. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. I want to look that up in my Amplified really quick. I love the Amplified. It just brings it home to me. Amen. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is within you? Whom you have received as a gift from God. When did that happen? When did you receive that gift? When you said, yes, Lord. That power entered into you. That mighty power come into you to guide you and teach you and counsel you. And, and just be with you. Never, never to leave you or forsake you. Wow. Amen. You're going to hear me say that a few times today. Wow. Yeah, wow. Received, a, received as a gift from God that you are not your own property. You were bought with a price. You were actually purchased with the precious blood of Jesus and made his own. So then honor and glorify God with your body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, there's a million ways you can take that honor with your body. But can you just let Jesus live your life? As you pray for people sitting here or sitting there. Can you just let Jesus have control? And let the holy power of the Holy Spirit flow. Be the conduit from the glory into a person as you pray for them. Sister, I had to lift your hand up this morning because you're tired. You have so much power in your life. I had to hold your arms up and I will continue to do that. Amen. Amen. You need strength. Amen. Oh, yes, Lord. Powerful words. God's presence. The same presence that crushed Isaiah. It just caused Isaiah to fall on his face in terror. It's not there somewhere. It's not just out here somewhere. It's here. Man, absorb that, will you? If we are in Christ, the presence of God is truly within us. I love it. And we have access to his glorious presence at all times through Christ, our mediator. The sweet, holy presence of God. Always, always, always available to us. You're never alone. Amen. Know this. We experience the presence of God through the scriptures. Yeah. Just as the presence of God hovered over the waters in Genesis 1, so the presence of God hovers over the pages of scripture. The Bible is no ordinary book. It's just not an ordinary book. Listen to some of this. It's not just a collection of words and pages. It's not something some author wrote to make money. To give you his ideas. And then you pay him for the book. You pay him for the teaching. Amen. This, this, this was freely given. Freely. Hebrews 4.12 it reminds us that the word of God, it is alive. Oh, yeah. It is alive. How would you like to have that? <laughs> yes, amen. Hebrews 4.12. I'm going to bring that one up real quick. Mm-hmm. 
Mm, I love you, Lord. For the word of God is living and active and full of power, making it uh, operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than two-edged sword, penetrating as far as the division of the soul and the spirit, the completeness of, of a person. And of both joints and marrow. The deepest parts of your nature. Exposing and judging the very thoughts. And the intentions of the heart. <whistles> Powerful. Amen? Amen. When we open the pages, pages of scriptures. We are encountering the living active spirit. Speaking of God. It is no safe thing to open the Bible. Got that one? It's really not safe to open the Bible. You never know how God will meet you. As you pour over the sacred text. You may. He may convict you of sin and move you into repentance. He may strengthen and encourage you in the depths of your soul. He may prompt you to pray. He may drive you to your knees in worship. Every time we open the Bible... We are encouraging the presence of God in a unique and powerful way. Every single time you open it up, you would, I, when, when I when I got that, I, I I got this like every time you open the Bible, it's just like wow, a big old light comes out, and and there he is, just opening himself, just his. His whole self just opens up to you. Every thought he has, every thinking he's ever had, and everything he's ever going to do is open to you. Powerful. Amen? Powerful. We're foolish to try to experience the presence of God elsewhere if we're not constantly emerging ourselves in the word of God. How many of you have gotten in that dry place and that Bible sat there and got a lot of dust on it? It's like getting so hungry, you have to find something to eat and nothing fills that void. Nothing satisfies that place. And you go back into the scriptures, you go back into the word and all of a sudden things are being filled up and touched and, and you're satisfied. And your word, the word is crying out to you, I've never left you. Where were you? Amen? Never forget this. We experience the presence of God through prayer. Consider for a moment the glorious nature of prayer. God, the creator of the universe, the king of king, wants us to request things of him. Now that's mind boggling. God wants us to open our hearts before him. To bring him our burdens and our request. And, and we just, he wants us to request things of him. He wants us to feel him, to know him, to, to just, just let him have his way in our lives. And when we pray, God actually does stuff. I believe that more and more today than I've ever believed it before. The presence of God actually and suddenly inhabits all of the big and the little details of our lives. Amen. He lifts our burden. He gives us peace. He empowers us to overcome anything. He heals. When we pray, God takes action. And if we want to experience the presence 
on a daily basis, it's as simple as praying and believing. Amen. Wow. I put a big word in there that time. I colored it. Wow. <coughs> we experience the presence of God when we fellowship. Yesterday the whole crew was here and they were pulling weeds and they were raking and they were digging and they were washing the building and and cleaning up inside and changing the refrigerators and moving pianos and moving refrigerators, just going, 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 going. That was fellowship. And God was with us. Hallelujah. Amen. And the church and the Bible study and prayer are just coffee with each other. You're going to hear me say that again. Matthew 18, 20. Got so good. Got so good. Hallelujah. Let's see, Matthew's in the New Testament, isn't it? Huh? 1820. I have it written down in here, but I'd like this. I'd like this. To do that, 1820. For where two or three are gathered in my name, meeting together as my followers, I am there among them. Amongst them. I am there. Among them. Two or three. Just where two of you are. He's there. Where three of you are. He's there. Where 20 of you are. Or 30 of you are. He's there. Amen. Here's a good note. Jesus himself, Jesus himself is present whenever believers gather in his name. He's there. He's present. He's there. Small group study, study uh, Sunday gatherings, women's, men's Bible studies, youth groups, prayer meetings, worship, coffee with friends. Stop at the neighbors and have a cup of coffee with them. Midrash, talk about the Lord. Pray for each other. Just, just visit. Amen. Amen. God does something special when we pray, sing, and serve together. He does something special. He's doing something special right now. He's healing right now. He's changing our paths right now. He, he's, he's making things straight again right now. He is an awesome God. Amen. And he's doing it right now. Hebrews 10, 25. I'm going to close here. Hallelujah. Oops, wrong, one, wrong button. This phone, this phone has, this smartphone has wrong buttons on it. Mine, mine too. Hebrews 10.25. Oh, there you go. Not forsaking or meeting together as believers for worship and instruction as a habit of some the habit of some. What, what do they mean by that one scripture there? It's the habit of some. You know, there's so many people on Sunday mornings that's just too busy to be in fellowship. Just too busy to be someplace where they can get a little feeding, where they can get a little, little more God, where they can get a little more instruction, a little more hallelujah. That's why it's important to take it out amongst them. One-on-one, -on -one, Amen. As is the habit of son, but encourage one another and all the more faithfully as you see the day of Christ's return approaching. Be more busy. In our Bible study, our, our, uh, our, our study is going to go along the lines here this next week is what does God expect from us in these days? 
What does he expect from us in these days? Well, he wants us to continuously gather together one-on-one, -on -one, two or three, just take the word out there. He wants us to be busy at that. Not a great big venue. Don't have to carry this everywhere you go. There's a lot of it in each and every one of you. Use it. And if, he, if you can't remember all of this, ask him in you, what do you say, Lord? And he has the right word for whoever you're sitting in front of. Whoever you're visiting with. We give him glory, amen? amen. But the day of Christ's return is approaching. Father is holding back right now for salvation. Again, I brought that up and I didn't bring that scripture. Man, I wanted to bring that. I don't know why he has me just kind of sitting on that. As we meet, God preserves us to the end. <laughs> As we just continuously be with us, meet with us, do these things together, he preserves us to the end. Amen. Amen. Our God is a good and awesome God. And I love the way all these songs today went with this. And even what you had to say, I should have just, here's my notes, go with it, finish. <laughs> God's a, God's a, he's, he's awesome. I love them. I love I love my God. I love Holy Spirit. I love the precious word. I love each and every one of you as, as we meet together. And Father, I just ask you. Hallelujah. Just make it so real in the hearts of your saints, our brothers and sisters here today. Just make it so real how you are so in their presence. And you just love hearing from them. Mm. And I know, Daddy, I, uh, I ask your forgiveness where I failed you in that. I failed you, but you have never failed me. And it just opens my heart. And it just opens my mind that I can't hide from you. Because you are never, never out of my presence and I just ask that you touch everyone today and remind them of that in a very special special way in Jesus name amen yes Debbie you do yes always let me turn this one off Wow, that was, this is so good today. I tell you that I have a footnote that goes along with that last scripture that you read. Um, on, oh, <laughs> well, this is the footnote. I, the complete body, here we go. Um, so this is Hebrews 10, uh, 25, where it says, Let us not give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing. But let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. We will become, or it can become very easy for us to um, find reasons and excuses and maybe even difficulties not to meet together. But God um, would like you to hear this footnote because I think it's um, something that he's laid on my heart for the end of this. So um, it says, as you see the day approaching... The day of Christ's return for his faithful followers is approaching. As it does, we will increasingly face difficulties, opposition, persecutions, and spiritual deception. Coming together regularly with other believers for worship, Christian companionship, and biblical instruction will provide the necessary encouragement to help each of us hold firmly to faith in Christ. 
It is the plan and expectation of Christ that believers grow in community with each other as we grow deeper in our relationship with him. Time together with other Christians will be a blessing to God as we worship him, a blessing to us through our deepened friendships and continued instruction, and a blessing to the world because we will be better encouraged and equipped to spread Christ's message among them. This is what we're all being called, and this is what we're all being equipped to do, and that is to share the good news of who Jesus Christ is, and that as the day approaches, it's going to become maybe more and more difficult to be able to do that, but as we come together as believers in Christ, as we encourage one another, as we take that step of faith, knowing that as we share God's word with another person, that it opens up a gateway and a door to allow Christ to come into their lives, that they may be healed and they may be equipped, and they may go forth and spread his good word. Don't be discouraged. That comes from the enemy, but be encouraged, because that comes from the presence of God. Amen. One note to our guest. Father, bless you. Keep you. His countenance shine on you. Don't leave here the same. In Jesus' name.